So, like the title suggests, we're going to take a look at Kong Skull Island. We're going to kind of analyze how the title sequence is put together. And then we're going to go into Fusion, create a couple of those elements to really bring that look together. So without further ado, let's get started. I was actually asked if I could do something on this title sequence and I was looking at it and I could do what I typically do going step by step how to use this element then using this element but looking through the project or the title sequence itself you're using a lot of the same things over and over again just kind of a lot of layering going on so we'll just kind of look through it things that pop out to me that I would add into my project and then I'll kind of show you a couple of those uh, techniques actually in Fusion itself. So it's not gonna be a step-by-step, -step. we're just gonna kind of analyze. I'll show you a couple of ways to recreate some of it and uh, hopefully that's enough to enable you to create something that has this like vintage look for yourself. So let's just take a look at this. Um, and one of the things that really stuck out to me while this starts up is that there's a real vintage look as you can see that there's a lot of green and you'll see a, uh, like little elements here and there with like hair and stuff like that that can just be a simple image that's thrown on the top of you know different shots uh, but then the grain itself it really depends if you have the free version or the studio version if you have the free version you can still recreate grain but it's on the fusion um, side and I'll show you that. If you have the studio version, you create you have a, a whole nother tool set to create uh, grain on the color page. So I'll also show you that then too. And the other thing that I noticed is that the, the words that are going on here, there's a lot of like scrambling going on um, and that's kind of all throughout the whole uh, project here. So that's something else that's pretty easy to do. But if we go back here, let me just show you this. Um, on this shot here, we can see that there's like a little bit of noise that's pretty static. Kind of calls out that it's just an image that's put on the top and then has like a screen mode um, so that like the darks are transparent. Um, so we have that. And one thing that I note, oh geez, I hit the wrong button. One thing that I notice in here with these title sequences is that every once in a while their dates now, I haven't seen this uh, film, so there's probably some significance in that. Uh, but the, when you're just watching this, you'll never be able to catch that. It'll just look like more scrambling because it goes so quick. But that's kind of a cool element. And I ended up uh, in this when we go into Fusion. I'll also show you that. Uh, but a lot of this is just a video that's in the middle that's cut up, right? And then there's an image on the top. And one thing with this image on the top, to really give it that vintage look. It looks like it was just a normal image where they just added a couple of lines and random pieces of text. But then what they also did, and this is something that I seen in the Chernobyl uh, title sequence as well, is that in the middle, it's sharp, right? And then as it goes out to the edges, it gets blurry. And then there's also um, a splitting of the uh, channels here. So you can see that the, the channels are split up a little bit, like some chromatic aberration, um, so. And you can see a lot of these elements getting reused. Like if we take a look at these numbers here and we come back a little bit, we still see those numbers being used. Same numbers, but they're just moved over a little bit. So uh, it's just, I, I would probably say there's probably about 40 different elements that are reused continuously. And the same with these boxes. This was an effect that's used multiple times throughout here. And to just change it up, they just add little subtle things like across the top, just this little band here. And these are just all like little, I mean, if I was to recreate this, this would all just be like little images that would be just thrown on there to really add something. Cause you can see, bam, two different ones, right? They got rid of the top up here. And then over here, they just added some random numbers. So and that's all that's pretty easy to do. And this between here is just a shift, right? So we can see that it's just motion blur. 
and that's pretty easy to do. One thing that you have to watch when, when you're doing that is let's say you use either a transform node or if you use a merge node, whichever node is actually doing the move that's moving everything, that's the node that you're going to be adding motion blur to it. So you can't go like later down the node tree and add motion blur on one of those nodes even though that there's motion in the shot. It's only the node that's actually doing the move that the motion blur is going to be calculated on. Um, the titles are pretty pretty much the same all throughout. We have the date increasing throughout, and then we just have like a uh, um, the the letters are getting uh, jumbled a little bit. And then to add extra to this, we just have like some lines going across here. And these are all just really layers, like textures um, that are added on top of everything. Here you'll see that there's like a crosshair and this crosshair texture you'll also see you know going out further uh this shot or this uh noise over here is like i said just another texture uh that will be used more and more um, throughout this and it's really just picking up the different uh in in this case they're using a lot of the audio from these shots but it's just telling your story uh, visually uh, with this because there's so much chaos going on they use the audio to keep you in because if it was just images it, you would be kind of lost what's going on here uh, but here's that crosshair again like I was saying just some random numbers thrown on there to make it look you know like period one thing that I also noticed is if you look at these uh, frames here right now to, to give it more of an organic look they kind of just re uh, scaled the uh, the edges here so that it doesn't it's not like a perfect curve like it's just rescaled but one thing that you'll notice here that really kind of ties this all together that's kind of like icing on the top is if you look right here along the edge there's almost like a little bit of like a i don't know like a dirty sort of like merging of like colors here right on the edge and that's something that you'll see throughout this as well you can see it more here um, so those are like other things that um, well, I also added in in my thing. And this is just really a lot of just, you know, jumping through different um, shots here. But it's all pretty much the same thing. We have the text in the middle that's going back and forth. A lot of textures that are going on. Um, the color grade on this is just desaturated a lot so any of the higher end saturation stuff just gets pulled back and we maintain the rest of the saturation um, throughout the shot and then just a lot of camera moves going on and motion blur kind of in there and these these kind of things there's probably a good amount of time spent on this um, the stuff that I'm gonna show you was just kind of whipped up in a day but or you know like an hour ago but um it, it, I think it'll at least give you people some some uh, stuff to work off of. And there you go, the crosshairs again. And these are just re, you know things that are just reused. So you make a couple of elements and you keep just throwing it in in random spots. These shots are going so fast that you would probably never notice it anyways um, that it's being reused. It's just adding that texture to make it um, to make it feel like it's older. And there isn't any like clean areas there's there's something going on kind of everywhere if it's green if it's some type of like vignette going on in the edges if we have like this this color um it's almost like a, a like a well i ended up using color burn um to do that but so that's kind of the majority of this it's just random shots a lot of it's probably just stock um some of it's actually from probably from the u.s government but uh, and you have access to use that if you did want to use it because yeah us citizens paid for it um and then here let's go back to this because i also seen this in here where to go so this this is probably just a, you know today like a, a a satellite image that's done today and then there might have been something there there might not have been something there but all you would really have to do is just have this circle, throw it into Fusion, then throw a, uh, a mask path, and then just animate that path to make it seem like it's being written on like that. That's all that that is. So, 
And then um, for these, you'll see that there's like a lot of um, like hair kind of going over. There are a couple of, um, there's probably some stock footage that you could get that is either has an alpha or it's just on black that you could use. But you could also just use an image and just continuously keep moving it. Um, you have that option too. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. It's just a lot of the same stuff going on and on and then just changing it up. So they had the, the boxes where it was like here and a box over here. So they change it up and now they're kind of vertical. And there's those crosshairs again in like three shots back to back. There's another one of the crosshairs. So let's go into how I created it. Um, what I did today. So I, uh, whatever image editing tool you have, um, all I did is I just made a couple of lines and some circles. And what I ended up doing is I just have it on black to show you guys, but what I ended up doing is just having it on transparent and then save it as a PNG just so I have that transparency so that I can use it in fusion. But that's all it is super simple to make my crosshairs. And then over here, it was the same thing. I just made some lines and then um, I just threw a mask or a, a, yeah, a mask on and I just kind of cut out some like little areas to make it a little more organic. And then I just put some random numbers at random spots that were pretty small. And that's all I did there. So those are, those are pretty much the only things that I have. And then this is kind of what I ended up creating here. So here we have the crosshairs. We have like that little bit of fringing, a random number here and some dust. And so there's that. And then I added in a sound effect. You guys probably won't hear that, but then it comes over to here. And I don't know if you've seen that cause I paused it, but the, the letters change and then they just randomly change the random dates. Um, in here, this could probably get a little bit of help a little bit of extra color thrown on top of this, but it's just those lines that I previously had. Um, another uh, like dirt layer that I threw on top, some random dates thrown here, and then all this footage that's in the background, it's just all stock stuff that I got off a of stock site. So that's those two. Um, the only other thing between these two is that there's a little bit of like a motion blur. So going from one to the other right there, um, and then here, let me see if, I don't know if this is actually going to record my desktop, but yeah, there you go. So it was just like a little uh, sound that I ended up throwing in there. So that's kind of all I did. Uh, I ended up making two uh, fusion comps. And the reason why I did this is because I added the color grade on and this yellow here is the same color as this, but because I then added, um, some noise and color grade over top. I really wanted this to stick out instead of feeling like it was a part of the shot because it was like the same exact colors over here. So I ended up having to make it into another fusion comp just for the titles though. So let's go over into fusion quick. All right, let's go over to this guy. And as you can see, it's color graded. All right, so when you start working with projects like this, one thing that you'll notice is uh, you're gonna end up having a lot of nodes. So the easiest uh, way to deal with having a lot of nodes is throwing um, uh, throwing the background on. And these aren't groups, they're just underlays, so they just kind of sit there. And then if you want to, if you grab it, it would also move all of those nodes. It just doesn't collapse like a, like a group does. Um, so if I come to the beginning, I just have just that shot of my um my like little explosion and what i ended up doing here is i just kind of set the in and out points and where it was because it, it was actually a bit longer um let me actually show you this i forget what this one's actually called okay so we'll just throw it in here this is actually it just kind of like hangs out for a bit um, and then the explosion comes up. So I just wanted to get rid of that beginning part. So all you have to do is in my last video, a lot of people were like, oh, what's the point of this, right? It was kind of to, to, to show this, but um, what, you, what I ended up doing is I just cut off the beginning first 24 frames. And let's actually just show just that node. 
I just cut off the beginning of those 24 frames and then just butted this up to the beginning. So it starts at zero and it goes to 44, but the 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 um, the portion of the clip that I actually use is from frame 24 to 68. Um, so there's that. Here's my crosshairs. I just kind of threw it on there. And then I seen that this was uh, 720 and I knew that I was gonna you know, do this in a 1080. So I just made everything 720 from there on out. Um, so here, it's just a solid, right? That 720, 720. And then I threw on just a, a, a rectangle. So all it is, is just the rectangle tool, right? So it's just the rectangle tool. And then all I did is instead of having it right on the edges, made it 0.95, rounded it a little bit, but it was too clean. Like I didn't want this, um, this like orange haze or around the outside to be over the whole thing. So then what I did is I cut it up a little bit. So as you can see, I just have a little portion here and then made it subtract. So it takes this first mat and then we subtract out that and I feather it so that it doesn't look like harsh edges. And then I did it again down here. So it gives it more of like, you know, kind of all over the place and it just gives it more of an organic feel. So currently this doesn't really look correct, but as we go in here, you'll see more. And then I just took the same exact node here, which was the perfect uh, border. And then I just added, I just copied it and I added a black uh, with the same settings. Everything's the same. So you just copy paste and then that gets added on. And then here you can see a little bit of that um, edge here. And here you just go to, so I'm taking this orange and I'm adding it to the picture and I just have to, the apply mode is color burn. Um, so then we add this over and because I had blur on all of this, it's going to exceed outside of here. So that's how I got that around the edges. And then here I crop it right to the 720, 720. So then I have the perfect crop and I just wanted to blur it up just a little bit because um, everything was looking a little too sharp. So I just blur added a little bit of blur and it doesn't really matter it, that the crosshairs are kind of blurry, that the background's kind of blurry because this is all just kind of like a vintage-ish look. So the more blur, the better I kind of seen when I was building this. And then um, I put everything on a black background so then I could position um, that and because currently this is only 720, 720, I wanted to get it to the full resolution. So that's how I popped it up to the full resolution. And then here, I don't even remember what this is. Okay, so then this is my dirt layer. And I didn't want the dirt to be like perfect uniformed over everything. So just adding these really organic shapes, adding some feathering in there. Um, and then I just added a little bit of blur. What I ended up doing is I took this and I piped it into this background because I wanted this dirt to have a color because initially it was white and it didn't really look good. So what I did is I piped it into here as a mask and then on this background, I then uh, came over and I changed how it, because uh, typically it's, it's always set up for alpha. So all this stuff over here, the alpha would have been the mask. So instead of that, I just did luminance. So, so then we have the specs and then in here, I just wanted it to be a little colored. I could have done like a, a, an actual color tool to change the color of it. But instead of doing that, I just kind of like doing it this way. Um, just getting a very slight, you know, yellow tint into there. Um, so then it's a little yellow and then they were too sharp. So you blur them out just a little bit and throw them on here and you can see them ever so slightly around the frame. Um, just adding, you know, that extra layer. And then here I have the text. So for the text to get blurry text, all you do is you put in your, your, uh, your actual text. I uh, made it the size I wanted to. I came into here, I turned it 90 degrees so I could put it there. And then what you do is you come over into shading and you come down to softness. And this is where you're gonna get your, your, your softness. So all I did is I just made this um, three. And then I get my, my softness, which kind of adds into everything because everything else or every, everything else is a little blurry. And then that just gets thrown onto this big um, image. And all this is, 
is I just grabbed a uh, background, right? Grabbed the background, and then I came over into the size, hit auto off, and then for the height, because I wanted it to go from one to the other, all I did is I come into here, so it says 1080, and you can do math in these, so you just do times two, boom, you get your resolution. All you do, throw that on top, throw this in here, and then you bring this up to the top half, and then you just fill the bottom half with the other shot. So then, then you can make your move from one to the other um, sort of easy, or else you have to do, um, you have to take like two different, eh, it gets kind of complicated if you do it. Uh, there is another way of doing it, but it gets a little complicated. So then the second half of this, so let's come over a little bit more. I have my actual shot here, right? And I don't know why I put that on a background, but I did. Oh, I know exactly why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to cut off the edge. Because initially I had this as the full size, and then I was like, ah, that doesn't really kind of make it look like it's vintage, like all the aspect ratios are all jacked up. So I uh, just cut off the edge, and then I was able to put some like the uh, the dirt was able to shine through here a little bit better. And then I was also able to add that text over here. So here is those lines that I had. Um, and I just added a little bit of a blur to it. Uh, and when I added in the blur, I was looking at this, I was like, there's no way anyone would ever be able to read those numbers now, but whatever. The other thing that I did with this is I reduced the um, the blend and that's kind of like how bright this all this stuff because this is all going to be the foreground how bright that foreground element is going to be so then coming down a little bit more now here is where i'm going to be adding in the uh the dirt and like i said i want same thing here i want to make it a little organic so i cut out a little portion just so it's not over the whole frame blur it out a little bit then here, instead of coloring it, I just add it screen so that it gets rid of the black and all the bright stuff stays there. And then for here, if this is where normally if I was making a project, I would use like real uh, lens flares and that kind of thing to add that little bit of color. But the easy way that you could go around doing that if you don't have access to them or if you just kind of want to do them yourself is using the fast noise. And as you can see, if you set up fast noise correctly, it kind of works kind of nice where it's so big that it kind of like adds all of these like little gradients um, over the whole frame. And then so I take that fast noise and I pipe it into a background, which is just like this purplish color. And just to make it simulate like a coating like the um, yeah, like the vintage lenses would give like that coating uh, color. Uh, anyways, so then I did that and then here just ran as <laughs> text. I ended up using like a v VHS because I was trying to think of like when you take a uh, with the old like film cameras when you take a picture, um, it would have like this, you know, blocky font. So I just used this uh, VCR font that I have had on my computer for quite a while. Um, just threw that down there. Worked out great. So then we're adding that to the whole project. Obviously right now you don't see them. Um, and the reason why is because if I was making this into a big project, what you wanna do is when you're done using a section of your nodes, you want them to be off. You don't want them to be running because if you have all of your nodes running and they're not actually visible, it's just extra um, computation time that's not needed. So. When you turn a lot of nodes, what other functionality is when you turn their blend to zero, then they don't process anything along that uh, part of the node tree. So that's what I ended up doing here. So I don't have to deal with that kind of saves you time with rendering, uh, but it's on and it's only, they're both only really truly on when um, they're going to be together. The other thing too, that I didn't mention here is that in here, I also have it set up to not start right at frame zero because you bring something it's going to start at frame zero. So instead of that, I have it start at frame 32. And at frame 32, it's going to start here at frame zero. So right when that video clip starts. Um, so then they come into here 
and this is where I have my my resolution so the background here is going to dictate what this nodes uh, well a couple of different uh, parameters but one of them is the resolution of this new node right so I'd use this background and say okay this is going to be 1080 1080 that's what my end is right and then uh, I'm piping in a bigger uh, image so then that enables me to do a move so you can see here is my move from one to the other and because like I was saying before the nodes that you have the move in you want to add the motion blur so you just come over to here you add your motion blur in the higher you have the quality uh, obviously the longer it's going to take to render but the the smoother the 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 uh, the creamier the um, the motion blur is let me show you so if I zoom in here and we can see that there's a little bit of stepping here it's so fast that you wouldn't be able to see that and it's kind of one of those things when you're working on these big projects is it's like okay where can I skimp a little bit on you know render time here or render time there because I could you know crank this up to let's say 15 and I'll get nice blurriness here but now it's going to take a bit longer or I can go down to the default where you can see like a lot of steps here so um, eight for me for this particular shot was like that that perfect um, area where you, you you can't really notice and then we just spit that out to the um, back out to the timeline so then that comes over here to the timeline and then what i ended up doing is i like would watch the once this renders i would watch this through and say okay where do i want the text and i was like okay when this comes up that's where i want the text so i, I believe it was frame 70 so we'll come into here and i think it starts on frame 70. Um, so let's go to frame 70. there's a couple of things with uh when you're working with the text node here all right so Let's see everything. Uh, hello. Uh, the first thing you do is you type in whatever it is that you want, right? So I'm going to click on this. You type in whatever you want. Then you right click and you go down here to text scramble. And what that's going to do, it's going to add another modifier. Now I added that modifier in this particular uh, field. And that's kind of good to know for when you start to use other modifiers. Um, because they show up up here, but knowing where you put the uh, the modifier is very is is good to know um, when you add when you end up adding a lot of modifiers to to one node. So uh, the first uh, in this little box, wherever I put keyframes, that's where it's going to change the core text. Um, so here, oh, frame forty is actually where it starts. So frame forty, I want to I want to stay say okay this is where it's going to be the underlying text is going to be jrtv right up here randomize um this can go from zero to one and i always look at it as percentage so 0.1 will be 10 percent 0.2 will be 2 20 percent and so on you know 1.0 is a hundred percent of the characters are going to be manipulated uh down here when you first create one of these you're going to, uh, let me just show you here. You're gonna get a whole bunch of different characters here. And because the stuff that I was looking at in the title sequence, everything was capped. So I just got rid of the lower case and I got rid of the numbers as well, because I didn't want those in there. I just want everything to stay capitalization. If you only wanted to do different specific characters, you can type it in there, whatever it is. Uh, animate on, this is just saying that time, time means frame infusion. Uh, and then randomness. Uh, so the idea here is that I want it to say JRTV and then I wanted it to flip between those dates like we did before. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start at point two. So we have 20% uh, of the characters are going to be changed and then that's going to windle down to zero. When it gets to zero, none of the characters are changed. Okay. Now, I want it to stay that way, but then when I got to a certain area, I wanted the text to completely change to a date, right? So that's that underlying text that I was trying to say here, the input text, right? And how this works, whenever you keyframe and type something in, it'll before that keyframe, it'll stay whatever it was, and then once it gets to that keyframe, it'll change on that frame to whatever you want. So I did three different dates here, so it stays 
boom it switches boom it switches again so if i wanted those to be randomized too i could just uh, add keyframes to get the randomization to happen there um it kind of sucks i wish there there was a way to pipe in the first layer in the future there might be but currently there isn't a way to pipe in the first layer so i could see it so when i'm adding this on because what i ended up doing um to the uh to all of this is i added a little bit of um um colors color correction here pretty much uh one of the main things that i wanted to do is i wanted to get everything kind of i didn't want to have such high dynamic range so i brought everything i squished it down a bit on this first node here i squished everything down a bit um just so because i didn't really want to deal with that the other thing too is on here i used the um film grain now this is something that you need studio for but it adds a lot of really cool texture to it it adds a lot of blurring it, it, it it's it's a really cool um uh i think they refer to it as resolve fx uh but if you do not have this let's go back into uh, fusion i can show you something else that you can use so if you come into here I hit shift spacebar and we just and we type in here tv We'll get this TV node, and let me just throw in a, another color here so I can see this. All right, and then let's just make this a weird color. Okay, so we come into this TV node, and uh, it does a lot of things to simulate TV, but one of the things we'll do is we'll turn off the scan lines, and then you can come over to here, noise, and then you can increase the size of that noise. I don't know if you can see that, but we have some noise here that's going to uh, you know, be, uh, continuously created. I guess you have to change this. Uh, but you can see like it's, it's going to add in that noise, that green, um, if that's something that you wanted to add in. So you could, um, throw this on top of everything that you had. So let's see here, bring this into here and there we go. Now we have, and that actually looks really nice. We have like a grain over everything. If we can see that here. So that's another way to add in um, grain. This doesn't have like the blurry bits and all of the other, um, you know, stuff that the, uh, in the uh, color page has, but if you need to create something that's similar to give that vintage-ish look, you can still use this. Um, but yeah, so that's how you would do that. And I think that kind of covers everything that I wanted to cover with this. This is kind of like a new thing for me to, to be creating. Um, there's 101 different ways to create just about anything out there. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show people how they could say, take some inspiration from something like, let's say this title sequence and maybe use some inspiration from that to create something on their own within DaVinci Resolve's fusion. So hopefully that kind of helped some people out, gave you guys some ideas on some, you know, creative stuff you can do. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I got for you. Uh, if you guys have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, I have a link in the description to a Facebook group. It's getting kind of big now. You can ask your questions there. There's a big community. If someone knows the answer, they're more than likely going to help you out there. I also have a lot of tools that you can take a look at. The link's down in the description uh, with different titles different uh, intros, a bunch of different stuff on my website that uh, really helps support me. But that's kind of all I got for you for today. Let me know in the comments if I should make more of these sort of things because um, I actually like, you know, kind of doing this sort of thing. But yeah, let me know. My name's JR and thanks for watching.